Johnny Dollar. We're all clear, Johnny, because I've assured them that you have more than adequate federal security clearance. <sighs> After all, you were permitted to investigate that missing missile matter of yours. Now, now, wait a minute. What? So, in spite of the fact this sort of thing isn't exactly covered by the insurance we've written for them, well, I, I wish you'd go over there right away. Hey, wait a minute, will you? Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this emergency and all. This is George Reed, Floyds of England, here in Hartford. Now, Johnny, if you're Holy free... Holy George, don't tell me you're in your office at this ungodly hour. Hey, Johnny... It isn't even 9 a.m. yet. I know, I know. I just got here a few minutes ago. Well, what's ago. the big emergency? A phone call I just received from Dr. Paulus Rayburn. Do you know him, who he is? Rayburn? No. He's the head of Nuclear Processors Incorporated. Where's that? Out on Woodland, beyond the north end of town. You know, that large group of concrete buildings at the edge of Piney Woods? Nuclear Processors, huh? Yes, that's right. Now, we handle all the insurance on the place and its equipment, though I understand there's no actual coverage in this specific instance. Nonetheless... What do you mean? Nonetheless, because they're a client, in view of our reputation for extraordinary service at all times, plus the sizable premiums we collect from them, well, I, I hardly think we should let this call... Yeah, well, what's answer. bothering this Dr. Rayburn out there? Something very important has been stolen, he tells me. Like what? I don't know, he wouldn't say. But he did imply it's something vital to the outer space rocketry program. Okay, George. So, in view of the fact you have security clearance... Yeah, I said okay. ...and the fact it'll take some hours for an investigator to come up from Washington... Yes, George. ...plus the fact he made it plain the time element is George. most important... ...and since you're right here within a few miles... George, of stop yammering and hang up that phone so that I can... Okay, baby. Oh. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Are you smoking more now, but enjoying it less? Have a real cigarette, have a camel. The best tobacco makes the very best smoke. A real cigarette, have a camel. Are you looking for flavor and mildness? Have a real cigarette, have a camel. The best tobacco makes the very best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a camel. Again, for the 11th straight year, Camel outsold every other cigarette, filter, king size, and regular. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. So if you're smoking more now but enjoying it less, change to Camels. Get more real satisfaction every time. Start to really enjoy smoking again. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Floyd's of England, North American office, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the nuclear goof matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, 40 cents for some coffee and a couple of soggy donuts along the way during my drive out to nuclear processors. A tall, heavy wire fence surrounded a group of squat, windowless buildings, partially hidden by the huge oak and fir trees of Piney Woods. At a sort of glorified sentry box beside the gate stood not one, but three armed guards. One of them was chewing out the other two. But he stopped long enough to look over my credentials, make a phone call from inside the sentry box, then open the gate for me. He directed me to a big steel door in the otherwise unbroken face of one of the nearby buildings. There, after I'd parked my car, another guard took me inside. He led me through a perfect maze of long, narrow corridors with heavy wooden doors at the sides, all of them closed. From somewhere in the building came the almost ominous hum of machinery, big, powerful machinery. Or maybe I felt it rather than actually heard it. Finally, we came to a door with a single name Rayburn on it. Come in. Come in, Mr. Dollar. 
Dr. Rayburn? Come in and sit down, Mr. Miller. Thanks. Only, how do you stand it in here, Doctor? I beg your pardon? Well, compared to this place, the city morgue is real cheerful. I'm afraid these buildings were put here not for decoration, but to carry on the very important scientific work we have undertaken. Yeah, something to do with rocketry, I understand. Partially. And does that mean space probes, uh, lunar shots, atomic missiles, and so on? Uh, yeah, something of the sort. Now, the time is of the very essence, Mr. Dollar. I take it Mr. Reed of Floyd's of England was somewhat vague about why I asked for you? Oh, that's the understatement of the week. But he told me something's been stolen. Yes. A small, a minutely small quantity of... of a highly radioactive substance that is vital to a new concept in cyclotrons. That is to say, atom smashing. Oh, something like uh, radium or uranium or strontium or... Yes, uh... yes, something like one of those elements. The point is that outside of the protective paramagnetic field in which we keep it here... It can become dangerous, terribly dangerous, within a matter of hours. Oh, how dangerous? The tiny amount in the container that was stolen. Well, that container made of lead is no larger than this book, by the way. Well, Dollar, although its chain reaction is limited, there's enough in that container to wipe out a small city. What you said within a matter of hours, Doctor. The chain reaction could begin in anywhere from four to six hours from the time it left here depending on temperature and whatever shocks and vibration to which it might be subjected. Then unless it's found, brought back here. Exactly. That is why I was afraid to wait for the men to get up here from Washington. But you have told them about this. I've told them everything. They promised to have men up here immediately. Do you know exactly when the stuff was stolen? It's now 9.34. Yeah. Dr. Rallinoff left here with this... this material at exactly 7.46. Rallinoff? Dr. Igor Rallinoff. The man who stole it from us. But if you know... If only he knew the potential, the terrible potential destructive power of this thing he's carrying about with him. You must find him, Mr. Dollar. It must be returned to us. Before it's too late. Here's Hollywood star Mona Freeman. Who feels like acting with a miserable cold. I relieve cold distress the fast way, with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains and headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When a cold strikes, do what I do. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. Now, here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Nuclear Goof Matter. Yes, Mr. Dollar. Dr. Igor Sergei Relinov, whom I myself called into work with us on one of our important secret projects. But it was one that had nothing whatsoever to do with this dangerous radioactive material he has stolen from us. He does not realize the potential death and destruction he's carrying about with him. He doesn't know what it is? Then why did he steal it? Not knowing what it was, not knowing its destructive power, he nevertheless must have realized it would be of of importance to, shall we say, to a foreign government. Rollinoff. You see, because of pressure from Washington on the project to which I had assigned him, well, I had employed him. I alone am responsible for bringing him here before obtaining a final security clearance on him. Oh, then I guess you're in real trouble. If you can find him, if you can return that leaden container with that deadly material in it... And you have no idea where he might have gone when he took off from here. We we have only his address and a list of the names of some of his friends here in Hartford. Then let me have him. Yes, of course. I'll have my secretary get them for you right away. I don't know who your contacts in Washington are, but have you notified the FBI of this? Not yet. After all, Mr. Then do Dollar, it right away. Call the New York office. If nothing else, they'll at least be able to tell you if this Romanoff is a spy. I'm afraid he can be nothing else. 
If only the guards had questioned his leaving so soon after he got here. If only you hadn't hired him in the first place without getting a proper clearance on him. But his recommendations were excellent. His references. I got no negative reports. Oh, let's face it, Doctor. You're in trouble whether we find him or not. I know. To say nothing of what'll happen if heat or vibration or something triggers off that chain reaction you were talking about. Or even just the passage of time. I know. Give me those names and addresses. And more important, this, Mr. Dollar. Oh, what's this? A detector. A sort of adaptation of the Geiger counter. In very compact form. It reacts only to... To this material that was stolen. Then if I get near him and he has the stuff with him. It will make a clicking sound like a, a Geiger counter. Now, this tiny needle will move and indicate the degree of radioactivity. All right, good. Provided, of course, this switch is on. I see. But be very gentle. Oh? You. It's extremely delicate, like a fine watch. So be very careful. Very gentle with it. Okay, doctor, I'll take care of it. Now, give me that list of names and addresses. Expense account item 2420 for a tank full of gas, and I really stepped on it getting back to town. The delicate little instrument on the seat of the car beside me. Simple-looking device. A tiny metal box with a switch on the front, a dial on the face of it with a needle pointing at zero. Even when I turned on the switch. Even the radium on the dial of my wristwatch got no response from it. I decided to go first to Ronanoff's address, way the other side of town, south of Colt Park. Then it suddenly occurred to me that in all the rush, I'd failed to get a description of the man I was looking for, or even a photograph of him. Oh, sure, with a name like Rolinoff on a scientist, it wouldn't be too hard to picture him mentally in a, in a general sort of way. And if there was a landlord or landlady at the place he lived, even a neighbor, I could get all the description of him I'd need. Nonetheless, within a few blocks of the place, I decided to stop somewhere and telephone Dr. Rayburn. You know something? That decision got me nothing but trouble and delay. At the next corner was a drugstore. I knew there'd be a phone booth. I watched a bus pull away from the corner, then drove in to park, not seeing the young fellow who just stepped off the bus until it was too late. Oh, no! Good Lord, I've killed him. All right, all right, folks, please, listen. Look, it was an accident. Now, look, he'll be okay. Come on, help me, somebody, will you please? Pick up his bag there, and I'll get him to a hospital. Help me, will you? Here. I'll help you, mister. You think he's still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. He'll be all right. Please, open the door for me. For sure. And here's his briefcase. Toss it in back. For sure. There. Now, when the police come, tell them I've taken him over to General Hospital. Please, will you? Yeah, sure. The nice-looking young blonde fellow I'd struck down was still unconscious when I got him to the hospital but apparently had no broken bones or internal injuries. I showed my credentials, told them to notify the police of what had happened, that I'd be available whenever they wanted to question me. I told them to give them the best possible care that I'd foot the bill. Then I went back to my car and took off again, cursing the delay that my own carelessness had brought about, because I knew the terrible danger to wherever running off might be because of the deadly package he was carrying, because of the... And then I saw it where the shock and impact of my sudden stop had knocked it to the floor when I'd struck the young blonde fellow. The delicate device that could have been the one, the only way of detecting that radioactive material. My one sure way of spotting Rolinoff. It was ticking merrily away. Switch on or off, it didn't make any difference. Ticking away, broken, utterly useless. continue with the third act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in exactly one minute. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, X-Lax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolate at X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. 
And that's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is X-Lax in your medicine cabinet? And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Nuclear Goof Matter. <laughs> Driving fast, but a lot more carefully, I went to Rolandinoff's address. On a nondescript sort of side street, it turned out to be a rather cheap-looking rooming house. Hardly the kind of place you'd expect to be the residence of an important scientist. But it was the address Dr. Raven had given me. And if I could find there some clue as to where he was, where he'd gone. Oh, come on, come on. You. This door ain't locked. Listen, ma'am. You Mr. Parker, the man that telephoned? Parker? Dr. No, listen. Dr. Rolinoff's room. Room? Well, he's got three of them, regular apart. Yeah, where? Only you won't find him there. Not him, anyway. Where, I said. Please, come on, come on. Well, it's up on the third floor. Okay, thanks. That's the whole floor he has. Okay. Who are you? What do you want, anyhow? Oh, great. I didn't get the key from her. Well, there's no time for that now. Here we go. The shades and drapes were tightly drawn. The room was dark. I felt my way along the side of the wall looking for a light switch, then gave up and headed over toward one of the windows. I never got there. Well, you're not Parker. Huh? I thought not. Yes, sir. Bag with you, so you aren't rolling off either. Okay, then, buddy, let's have some light in here and see who you are. You're one of his pals. Come here to. What? Oh, no, you can't. Oh, brother, you certainly look like. Now well, maybe you've got some identification. Yeah, this card case. Of... Holy smoke, it is. Now, you just look in here, mister. When I let you in here, you didn't say anything you like to me? this was going to happen. I haven't got time to explain. Just get me some water and a towel and a washcloth, please. Go ahead. Now, you listen here. Will you Mr. please you... do as I tell you? Now, go ahead. Yes, sir. Johnny. Come here, Johnny. Uh, hi, hi. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, old man. I had no idea it was you that you'd be coming up here. Johnny, boy, can you hear me? Johnny. Here, here. Stace. That's right. Now, come on. Take it easy. Stacy Ringler. That's right, Johnny. Look, I'm I'm sorry. F B I. No, Johnny, I'm with Nucleonic Investigation Department now. Easy, baby. And then it's you I gotta think for this. Yeah. Bit. Yeah, Johnny, and I'm sorry as the devil. I had no way of knowing it was. All right. All right, now listen to me, Johnny. Yeah, Stacy. Listen. You're working on that stuff that was stolen from nuclear processing. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Harry Parker and I came up from Washington. Yeah, Parker. We came in by jet. Now listen. Rolanoff must have thought he had plenty of time, that they wouldn't miss that stuff until tomorrow when they planned to work on it. Uh-huh. Well, rather than arouse suspicion by galloping out of town, he was taking his time. But we got here in a big hurry. All right. I holed up here in his rooms, and Parker was checking on how he'd get over here from that plant in case he came back here. Are you listening to I'm me? I'm listening. Go ahead, go ahead. He was there in the drugstore at the bus stop. He was about to close in on Rolanoff when you ran him down. When I what? You ran him down, Johnny. Rolanoff, with your car. That young, good-looking blonde guy? Yes. That was Rolanoff? That was Rolanoff. And Stace... Parker couldn't get through to him with that crowd around him. He didn't have time. He just saw you pile him into your car and take off. And I, not knowing who he well, was... thanks to a couple of traffic cops where you tore through some red lights, he traced you to the hospital. You'd left, but he put the cuffs on Rolanoff. And... You didn't know who he was. Oh, I was kicking myself for my goof and oh, running baby, down. Oh, baby, that's the greatest goof you ever pulled. Well, now, wait, Stace. Yeah? The radioactive material. Well, that we haven't got yet, or any sign of it. Then somebody, somebody in that mob That's right, have... Johnny. But don't you see, unless we can find that stuff. I know, I know, and there isn't much time. Come on, Stace. The only thing we can do is start the search for it there at the bus stop. <laughs> Johnny, unless we can locate every one of the people who were there. And Parker said there was a big crowd by the time he got out of that drug. 
Hey, where'd you get this? Uh, oh, a detective for radioactivity. Yes, I know. Where'd you get it? Dr. Rayburn gave it to me. Thank heaven the darn thing is run down now. It's what? Oh, it fell off the seat. It must have got busted. What do you mean? It was clicking like mad, even with the switch off. Busted. No. Huh? Busted or not, Johnny, there's only one thing in the world that could have made it operate. So don't you see, until it ran down the tiny battery that was... You're sure of that? Of course I am. Now, where was it when... When you heard it make the clicking. Johnny. Johnny, what's the matter? Good Lord. Well, yeah, come on. Look, behind the seat. What is it? Is it a briefcase of yours back here? Stace, the man who helped me put what him in the car. This thing? It weighs a ton. Gently, Stace. What? Not mine. Rolinoff's. Then it's weight. The lead container with the stuff in it. Then your goof really paid off. Huh? Yeah. What time is it? It's 11.38. 39. Would go off in four to six hours. After 7.46 this morning. That means we have exactly seven minutes. Yeah. Johnny, can we... You think we can make it back to the plane in time? Unless some sudden change in temperature, some shock, a vibration sets it off. I'll drive as fast as I dare. Okay, Jimmy. Hold it gently, Stace. Yeah. And maybe you'd better pray a little. Yeah. Yeah. So, by some miracle, we made it. But only seconds before that tiny mass of nuclear destruction was due to become critical. Yeah, we made it, by the skin of our teeth. But, after all, what more could you ask? Expense account total? Oh, so what? I needed a tank full of gas anyway. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Star has a word or two for you about next week's show. Thank you, Daniel. You're a good man. Well, thank you, Johnny. We're going to miss you. Next week, well, let's face it. The case I have to work on has more twists and turns and angles than anything you can imagine. It's called the merry-go-round matter. And believe me, the name fits. It all starts out with the loss of a valuable object of art, but from the collection of the wildest, most unpredictable old character I've ever known. What's more, he has a friend along, another character, just to complicate matters. And I'll tell you this, you'll get more than one chuckle out of the whole affair. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, G. Stanley Jones, Bartlett Robinson, Sam Edwards, and Stacey Harris. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. Better buys are your reward. Red Orange Motors for a Ford. Get your orange guarantee from the largest dealer in Albany. In the heart of Auto Road. Orange is the place to go. Orange Motors has the parts it's true. Plus 44 years of experience too. Orange Motors, if you're wise, for better service, better buy. Talk about service. Do you know about control tower service? Come to Orange Motors, 799 Central Avenue, and see the most efficient automobile service department in eastern New York. 44 years of experience. Get quality work and get it fast at Orange Motors, 799 Central Avenue, Albany. Better for buys, use your new at 799 Central Avenue. Orange Motors, if you're wise, for better service, better buy.
Radio 59, WROW, serving Albany, Troy, and Schenectady.